Married at First Sight Season 16. And this is going to be for Kirsten and Shaq. Y'all, um, no kiss, no Jamaica. I, I tell you, these two right here, last week, boom, my voice, last week, I said that these two are more than like, more alike than they're different. In fact, we're finding out on this whole season, there's a lot of couples that are alike. Uh, Clinton Gina's friend said they're so much alike, they're going to have to figure that out. We already know that Nicole and Chris have a lot of things alike. And I'm telling you that Shaq and Kirsten have a lot of things alike. <laughs> they have a lot of things alike. Uh, but let me tell you, a no kiss, no Jamaica. And she said uh, she was waiting for him to ask her for a kiss. And he said, okay, um, I'm going to take the cue of your girlfriends and I'm going to ask you for a kiss. And she still said no. <laughs> this girl is a mess. But you know what? There's an old saying that girlfriends are keeping single. And these girlfriends of Kirsten's aren't doing her any help at all. They are spurring on a bad behavior. <laughs> this is like you a thief stealing out a store. And your friends are over there saying, get it, girl. Get it, girl. Get it, girl. Uh, no. They should not be doubling down and co-signing on this bad, bad behavior of Kirsten. They actually should be over in the corner trying to talk some sense into her. And so instead of being different and being a voice of reason to Kirsten, they're giving the same energy that Chris is giving to Shaq. They better be glad that this girl is Shaq's dream girl because any other man, he'd be gone. Let me tell you, a single creep will keep you single. I told y'all this city, plenty of seasons before. Be careful who your girlfriends are because they may think they're doing a, your best interest but a lot of times, girlfriends have bad dating habits themselves. And then they come over here into your dating world and layering all their bad, bad dating habits into your dating world. And next thing you go, you got five or six women with bad dating habits <laughs> talking to Sha Shaq, who's a husband. Single friends are keep you single. I have to travel to Jackson, Mississippi. So you will be traveling to Jackson, Mississippi to actually come to class with me. What? Yeah. I'm already making major sacrifices <laughs> right now. You got me missing the beach. You talking about you want to be by some water. I didn't want to leave you out. Like, I really wanted you to see me in my element. Oh, I will. And then when do we leave? <laughs> We're going to leave from there and go straight there. Let me tell you why I think these two are similar. First of all, when Shaq started talking about he got to go to um, Jacksonville, wherever he went, he didn't even say, hey, do you want to go? How do you want to handle this? Do you want to stay here? Do you want to meet me in Jamaica? Whatever. I don't know. I don't even know if she had a chance, uh, opportunity. She probably did have a choice, but she don't know this man. So she don't have to go out of state with him with, with no one around. And there wasn't no producers going to Jacksonville with her. So she was definitely going somewhere with him or by herself with no one else around. She just met him. Who knows? I don't know. But he says, are you going with me, girl? Are you are going with me? Huh? So he didn't ask for no kiss. She wanted that. Now she, he's ordering her around, telling her, are you going to a whole other state or with me? And we'll get to the honeymoon or when we get to the honeymoon. Ah. But you know why he wanted her to go with him? Because he wanted to show out. He wanted her to see him in his element, in his PhD element. I'm telling you, these two are about the package, impressing each other, impressing people. Okay? They even alluded to it a little bit when they said, you know, he's talking about how people don't know how I go home alone and I'm suffering and I'm silent. Well, listen, there are a lot of people like that who are strong on the outside. They go home, they suffer, and they're depressed. But it's also on that person to be vulnerable and open up and let people know that you're suffering, to be willing to show your flaws, to be showing areas of your life where you might need help and you're not just here to help other people. So in one way, yeah, you can get mad because people don't recognize it, but you also got to take some ownership and say, I got to do my part and let people know, say, oh no, I need some help. That's what I mean. That's why I tell people, stop going around talking about you strong, you independent. No, say you need help because no one is so strong and so independent that they never need help. So stop saying it. And here Shaq is and Kirsten both saying at the same time, I suffer from the same thing. I know y'all both suffer. Because both of you like to present an outside package. These two are more alike than they probably realize. They're very much alike. That's in one way where I think that they could actually be together. Because if, they, if she really got off this looks thing 
and stop really evaluating him on looks. These two probably could have a good relationship because let me tell you, they both have a lot of things in common, a lot of things in common. I really can't fault the experts from putting them together. I kind of fault the experts because I feel like she's too picky to be on the show on Married at First Sight. But I get why they put them together because a lot of the two of them, they have a lot of the same mentalities. I can tell that. And Kirsten, to be honest with you, I kind of like her personality in other areas. Besides the pickiness, which I think is a cover up, y'all. Let me say, I think this pickiness that Kirsten has is a cover up. And I think what it is, is a defense mechanism for pre from um, not being rejected. I really do. I don't want to psychoanalyze her too much, but I see these two sides of Kirsten. I really do. I see this pickiness to her, which really isn't beautiful at all. It really isn't. It really is a turnoff. But I also see it as a defense mechanism. It's almost like, let me reject you first before you can reject me. And it's all also like, I want you to jump over all these hoops because I'm going to attach to you and I want to be sure that you're going to be here. Because one of the things that Kirsten said when she said uh, she didn't want to kiss him after he asked her for the kiss, she said, well, I want to take it slow. I want to do this because once you start uh, kissing, it can lead to other things. You see, this reminds me of a woman who's decided to like the women who become a born again virgins and all this other stuff or say they're not going to have any sex before marriage. Because really, it's not about trusting the men. It's also about they don't trust themselves. They don't trust themselves that once they start kissing a man or sleeping with a man, they don't trust that they'll be able to hold their feelings intact. They feel like they'll lose control. So I think a lot of Kirsten's pickiness and all this high standards she says she has is because maybe in the past, she hasn't been able to control herself, her emotions, and she's fallen too fast too soon. So you think her pickiness is because she's rejecting the man, but in a lot of ways, it might be kind of like a little defense mechanism to protect herself. And so it doesn't mean it doesn't look any less worse when you see it, um, but the origin for, for it can be different. I think Kirsten needs some therapy. I always say people need therapy. We all need therapy, but I think she needs some therapy, therapy to unwind this. I really actually do think she needs to figure out why is she this picky and why is she using pickiness to protect her and how is her pickiness actually getting in the way of her getting what she wants? Because I actually think these two could be a good couple. I actually do. I hope they work it out. I really hope these two work it out. One of the things she's realizing is that um, does Shaq have enough time for her? And she worried about that. She thought about that and said he talks about how busy he is because his work is where he gets a lot of his a validation. And that's true with a lot of men. But you could tell with Shaq, he likes to feel a certain way and work. The admiration that he gets from work, probably his students, probably other staff members, all of that on him, all of those compliments is what he likes. He likes that validation and that's why he goes to work to get it. So here's going to be the problem. If he likes all that validation and he likes all of that praise, and Kirsten isn't a woman that gives it to him, there's going to be a problem. He's going to need it. And the fact that she's so picky, it might mean that she's slow on the compliments. She's not quick enough on the compliments. But you know what? I did see another side of her in this episode. I saw her giving him some compliments and I actually liked it. He actually said that they had, she actually said that they had some good chemistry. I like the fact that he uh, carried her over the threshold. I mean, you know, he didn't carry her and put her on the bed. I mean, you know, maybe he was a little weak. He needed to uh, get some more muscles because uh, he pretty much only got three steps in that doorway. And he, he was uh, putting her down because <laughs> he was too busy wanting to check out the room. That was another thing. Oh, why are you so, uh, let me look at the room. I get it. I get it. But so he got three, uh, three steps into that room and he put Cursor right down on that floor. <laughs> I've been looking at stuff, y'all. I really do. But Kirsten says she loved the wedding. It was so beautiful. But once again, she loved the wedding. It's not that she was all into him. Is Kirsten one of these girls that just wanted to be married to have a wedding and, and forgets about what it takes to be a wife and the work is going to become to be the wife because she just wanted the wedding because that's really what she's dreamed of all this time. But she was like, oh, this was, this was a good wedding. This was a wonderful wedding. We had so much fun. I had so much fun dancing with you. And you know what he said, I have fun dancing with you too. I really think they have the chemistry. I really do. I hope they can build upon this. Now, their foundation may be flimsy because it's kind of all superficial. <laughs> but maybe they could build a, a solid foundation from it, y'all. Maybe it's a beginning. 
I'm, I'm hopeful for these two. I really am. But when he said, can I kiss you? And she still said no. He was like, okay, I respect your boundaries. <laughs> he better ask her the tough questions. He better not keep thinking she's a virtuous woman. Uh, she's no virgin. This is not about uh, being virtuous. He better figure it out real quick so he can ask all of the right uh, questions regarding why she can't even give this man a peck on the lips. A peck on the lips? Come on, people. But you know what? A no, a kiss, a no Jamaica. And she found herself a sitting in a Mississippi hotel. I guess she didn't even get to go to the conference with, with him. What? You dragged me all the way to Mississippi and I don't even get to sit in the conference room and listen to the speech? Uh, you could have met me in Jamaica. <laughs> but I know the right thing for her is was to go. Wifely duties. I get it. Uh, but let me tell you, I think he kind of took it for granted, y'all. I think he took it a little bit for granted. I think he could have asked her, what do you want to do? I thought he could have handled that differently. I really, really do. Um, but I'm so hopeful for these two. I hope they make it. I hope that they make it. But that's it, y'all. Please be sure to watch my other videos. This week I did a parody as well. Um, so be sure to watch that video. Hopefully it makes you laugh. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.